But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. Please feel so welcome to my channel as we declare praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. I'm a film teacher and this is the home of love, peace and joy. If that's your kind of thing, please go ahead and press the subscribe button and don't forget to press the bell notification icon so that you will never miss out on my future uploads. On today's video, I would like us to indulge in four structures, the foundations, the blueprint of God teaching us what love is, showing us love so that we can extinguish and know how to define love. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God clearly made a statement and he taught us that love is a choice. We did not do anything to earn the love of God. He gave it to us freely. It was his free will to love us. We did not do anything to earn it. We did not work hard to receive the love of God. But it was his precious gift to us. When we were in sin, we were in shame, we were in darkness, we deserved death. Our penalty was death, but God loved us that he chose to save us. Not because we did something that touched his heart and urged him to save us. No, he saved us because he loved, because he chose to love us. So one thing that we get from this scripture is that love is a choice, is a free will. And so he has raised us from the death by his choice of loving us, by using his free will to love us. You see, the most hilarious part about making a choice to love is that there's no promise that a person you are choosing to love will love you back. Because it's a choice, it's a free will. There are no guarantees. Jesus made a choice to die for our sins so that we can have eternal life. But he didn't force anyone to accept him as his Lord and Savior. But that doesn't change the fact that he's our Lord, all of us, our Lord and Savior. Whether you acknowledge it or not, whether you acknowledge him as your Lord and Savior or not, but because he made a choice to save us from death that makes him our lord whether we like it or not jesus died for all of us but not all of us accepted him as our lord and savior not all of us love him because he's our lord and savior that's the most unfortunate part when it comes to love so number one love is the act of choice it's the act of exercising your choice your choice is your free will. And knowing this, there are no guarantees that the person that you are choosing to love will love you back. God knowing that there are no guarantees in this thing. But I'm choosing to do it because it's my choice. And it's another person's choice to choose not to love you back. God loves us. But not all of us love God. Jesus died for all of us, but not all of us acknowledge him as our Lord and Savior. He made his free will because God created us in his own image. Therefore, he also gave us free will. That is why we are able to make our own choices. It's love. The second dimension in godly love is sacrifice, offering, and covenant. But because God chose to love, he gave, he sacrificed, he offered something that was of value to him. And that is how we obtained the new covenant. That is why in the Bible, we have something called the New Testament. The New Testament came because of the love of God. When we deserved death, God decided to wrap up the Old Testament that said, because now it's like this, 
we have these human beings need to die. God said, no, 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 no. But I love, because I love, because I love these human beings. I'm going to make a New Testament. And because I'm making a choice, I'm exercising my free will to make a New Testament. I know that I cannot just say it in words because I am God. No, I have to give because I love. I have to give. So he gave something that was of value to him, something that was so precious to him, his only begotten son, so that he can come here as an offering, as a sacrifice for the atonement of our sins, so that he can birth a new testament to save our souls, to save our lives, because God decided to make a choice and exercise his free will to love us. So there's no love without sacrifice offering that give birth to the new covenant. In our African culture, if a man loves, if a man loves as an African godly princess, if a man comes to me and tells me that he loves what he sees, the fact that he is bold enough to come to me and tells that stuff to me, to me it translates as, okay, this man is here in front of me telling me that he is ready to sacrifice something of value to him to obtain my love. Well, this man might not have meant that, but <laughs> he got the wrong one. He got the wrong one. No, oh, he got the wrong one. So that's what it means to me. So if he did not mean that, we have a problem. If he meant that he lost for me and he want to use me to satisfy his love, hey! But if he says he is a godly man, then... As a godly man, he's supposed to know what I'm saying. He's supposed to know this. And he's supposed to do this. That is what I'm expecting from him. Because that is what my father told me. And I'm only subscribed to the ways and patterns and norms of my father, the most high God. So to us, doctors, the doctors of the most high God, the word I love you to us translates as I see value in you and I'm ready to give up something of value to me to obtain your love. Then our response is we give you the address of our parents' house. You go there, you sacrifice your packets, your bank account, you gave out something of value to you. You make an offering and then the new covenant called marriage is born. Love. That's how it's always been. Even in the Old Testament, men who walked with God paid dowries and got married. Those people were Africans. Those people paid lobola. They paid dowries. They burned offerings. They made rituals. They did rituals for God. They burned incense. Those people were black people, guys. Those people were African. If you know, if you want to know our African culture, go to the Bible and read the Old Testament. You see that those were blacks. Those people, th those people cannot be something else. Those people were black because they are so us. I mean, which other culture pays dowries? Jacob loved Rachel. Because he made a choice, he exercised his free will to love. Now, because he decided to love, this means he must give. We are following godly person. Because he loves, he must give. So he went to the Rachel's house, the house of Rachel's father. And then he sacrificed there. He made an offering there. His offering was to work for Rachel's father for seven years so that he can make a new covenant and marry Rachel. Isn't that in your Bibles? Now God calls himself father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob knew this and he exercised it. 
You are the child of the Most High God, the God of Jacob, the God who taught us how to love and showed us the person, the structure, the foundation, which even Jacob followed. And he calls himself the God of Jacob. Now, if a man comes to you and claims to love you, but doesn't follow this person, that man is from the pit of hell. Run! That's a demon in flesh. Run! I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now, to everyone who is a child of God, if you love God, if you are passionate about God, if you care for God, this is your only reasonable service, to be holy. Now, I beseech you, brethren, to give your body because you love. You claim to love God, right? <laughs> that is your free will. No one forced you to it. Now, because you love, you must give. You must sacrifice your body. Your body must be an offering to God. That is your only reasonable service. Because you can never be of service for God if you are dirty, if you are filthy, if you are not holy. God is holy. And he commands us a gazillion time in the Bible to be holy. He says, be holy because I am holy. He hates sin. God loves people. God loves sinners. But he hates sin. So if you come to God, be willing to let go of your old sinful nature. Flee from the desires of your youth and pursue holiness, righteousness, and peace. Your body is the temple of the Lord. You can never be of service for God if the Holy Spirit is not within and upon you. There's no way possible. The Holy Spirit needs to be within and upon you so that you can be of service for God. That is why it is very important for you to be holy. How can you heal the sick? How can you drive out devils and demons? We have a mantle that we carry. Remember the prophecy of God himself in the Garden of Eden. He said, the seed of a man shall crush the head of a serpent. How are you expecting to do that if you are living in sin? If you are doing the devil's work, how can you expect to crush his head? No, you can't. He will keep on bruising your heel. So be ye holy because God our Lord is holy. If you claim to love God, then follow the pattern. This is the blueprint. Offer your body. Sacrifice for the Lord. And the only sacrifice that he needs from you is the sacrifice of your body so that he can dwell within you. In that way, you can be of service to him. The third and the last aspect of godly love is his eternal purpose. God is not a God of two minutes noodles. That is why he does not just give blessings like bless and bless and bless and bless and bless. Bless here, bless there, bless there, bless there. No. What's the purpose? Why? Why? John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's whoever. That's whoever. That's the purpose. Why did he gave his begotten son? That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life, ever purposeful God, ever eternal God, not a two minutes noodles mentality, carnality of human mindset. If you claim to love, your love must be purposeful. Why? In Genesis, he says, be fruitful and multiply. Why? So 
in everything God does, there's eternal purpose. God is not carnal. That is why if you are a child of God, you need to move away from human norms of thinking, human mentality, because you will always be confused by the way God works, because God works in only godly way. And not everyone can understand the ways of the Lord. Only his people listen. God is all wise, all knowing and all understanding. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit that thumbs up, that like button. Share it with as many people as possible so that we can flow this love. We can spread the love. Love is such a beautiful thing, especially if done right. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. May the peace of God rule in your hearts.